I don't know about you, but I've been overwhelmed by all the streaming services that have cropped up over the past several years. Mm-hmm. For sure. For quite some time, I've refused to sign up for anything other than Netflix and Hulu, mainly just because I've been subscribed to them for so long and I just didn't really see any reason to subscribe to anything else, and I didn't want to spend the money on anything else. These days, however, we're faced with a predicament because it seems that every streaming service is creating some really good original content. From Succession on HBO to Yellow Jackets on Showtime, Ted Lasso on Apple TV Plus and Stranger Things on Netflix, even Yellowstone on Peacock. The options are nearly endless, and if you have a limited budget, you're left wondering, what are the best streaming services for my money? Yep. Yep. I wonder that all the time. Well, in this video, my goal is to help you find the top two to three platforms for you based on your needs in 2022. I have combed through the catalogs of every mainstream platform, compared ratings of the content available on each one, and looked at the planned upcoming content in order to tell you what I think gives you the best bang for your buck. But first, I think the best way to kick things off is to talk about the worst streaming services out there. We'll call these the don't even bother options. Kicking off the list is stars. I'm going to be honest. I didn't know this was even a streaming service before I started researching this video. I mean, sure, I've heard of stars. I just didn't know they offered their content on a streaming platform. I looked into it and I've never heard of a single one of their originals, which means nobody is talking about their stuff. I'm simply not about to pay $9 a month for this and neither should you. Next up, we have Peacock. First of all, I hate them for taking The Office off of Netflix. I will never watch The Office on their platform. Am I holding a grudge? Yes. Will I really hold this grudge forever? Also yes. Secondly, I'm not going to sign up for Peacock for one show. It's just not going to happen. I suppose if there's a free trial and I literally have nothing else to do with my life, I may sign up, binge Yellowstone, and cancel. But honestly, I probably won't even do that. Alright, let's move into what I'm calling the on-again, off-again services, which provide you with good content, but just not enough to keep your subscription going year-round. And first on the list is Showtime. In my opinion, Showtime does have a pretty good selection of originals, but only a few of them are really worth watching, and I'm not going to carry this service for $11 a month long term. I recently came back to Showtime for Dexter New Blood and Yellow Jackets, and I'll 100% come back for the rest of Yellow Jackets, but I'm not going to remain subscribed while I wait for Season 2. This one comes with a 30-day trial, so I typically tell people, sign up for the trial, binge Dexter or Yellow Jackets or Homeland, and just cancel before you're charged any money. So moving on, I'm also going to include Amazon Prime in this list. The fact is, if I didn't already have Prime for all the other benefits, I'm pretty confident I would not be paying for Amazon Prime video by itself. The one and only thing I have ever watched on Prime is The Boys, and I do like that show, but I've personally never been drawn back for any of their other content. That said, I know they have some popular titles with The Expanse, The Wheel of Time, and the upcoming Lord of the Rings show, so there's certainly some good options available on the platform. I've just never felt the need to go watch anything there because of all of the other really good content available on the other services. Of course, if you're a Prime member already and the video service is just an added benefit on top of your subscription, then I would say you're getting pretty good value on top of everything else you're getting out of your Prime membership. Finally for this list, let's talk about Paramount Plus. I have paid for a total of two months of Paramount Plus, and the only reason I did that was because a couple of movies came out over the past year or so that were available to stream exclusively on Paramount Plus. So we watched those movies, and as kids tend to do, we watched them several more times over that month time frame that each movie was available, and then I canceled. There was never anything else on the platform that we wanted to watch and nothing that I felt provided enough value to keep my subscription. When I browse the catalog, there's just nothing there that makes me want to pay $5 a month plus watch ads. And even if I did pay $10 a month, some shows still have ads. What's up with that? Ultimately, there's not enough consistent value on this platform for me to maintain a monthly subscription. What? Well, Hi, are we making one of them YouTube videos? Heck yeah, I've never, I ain't got to be in one of these yet, so this is exciting. I don't know what to say, but uh, I do know we like subscribers, so make sure you click that subscribe button. Come on now, click it. Click it or tick it, like they say. Come on. All right, 
I guess my job's done here. See ya. All right, this is it, the long-term commitments. I believe these services provide enough consistent value by updating their catalogs and providing you with new and upcoming and fresh content across a broad range of genres. And it makes sense for you to carry a recurring monthly subscription with these services. At the end of this section, I'll tell you what I think is the best combination of services for somebody on a budget of say around $30 a month. First up, we have Disney Plus. In my house, we use Disney Plus all the time because we have children. We love the vast library of kids shows and all of the Disney and Pixar movies, which I think easily makes Disney Plus the best option for families. In terms of content geared towards adults, you do get Star Wars and Marvel titles, including many new Disney Plus originals, which I have really enjoyed myself. At $8 a month, this one's pretty much a no brainer, especially if you've got kids. Next on the list, we have Hulu. This one is especially recommended for those of us who have completely cut the cable cord. I haven't had cable for nearly a decade now, and I've been a subscriber to Hulu as a replacement for most things I watch on network TV. I still use it to this day, and even if the shows I watch are on break, I stay subscribed because the price at $7 a month is low, and I never know when I'm going to want to binge some Shark Tank. Now, the ads do drive me crazy, but not crazy enough to cough up the additional $60 per year to go to the ad-free version. I wouldn't necessarily say Hulu makes sense if you have a cable or satellite service. Hulu does have its own originals, and some of them are pretty good, but I just would probably move this up into the on-again, off-again section if you do have cable or satellite. But again, if you have cut the cord, I do believe Hulu is the best way to stay caught up on mainstream cable television shows. All right, let's talk HBO Max. From classics like The Sopranos to present day hits like Succession, HBO has been producing incredible television for a very long time. While other services in the list will strike gold from time to time, HBO seems to crank out hit after hit. After signing up for Max, you'll have hundreds if not thousands of hours of top-notch series at your fingertips. On top of their library of impressive TV series, you get access to a huge catalog of new and old movies and the selection is second to none. Additionally, during the pandemic, we've had multiple new release movies available on the platform at no additional cost, which has been amazing. Even at the higher $15 a month price tag, HBO Max provides arguably the best catalog of TV series and movies available anywhere. All right, let's move on to Netflix. These days, Netflix needs no introduction or detailed explanation. We all know what you get with Netflix, and it seems that everyone just accepts that this is an expected monthly expense. Well, that or you borrow it from someone. Either way, I think most people have access to Netflix in their homes today. So is it really worth it? For me, the answer is probably. It does feel like I've been watching less and less Netflix with all the other offerings available out there. And years ago, Netflix originals seem to be much better than what they've been putting out here recently. The Netflix machine just pumps out so much content now, and more often than not, they are just okay. That said, we still get a Squid Game or Ozark from time to time, and for that reason, I keep my subscription. Netflix also has a good catalog of children's content, so in my home, the kids probably watch more Netflix than me and my wife. If I had to absolutely cut one of my services, I can't say for certain that Netflix wouldn't be on the chopping block. The price currently around $16 a month continues to increase, and as I said, they just don't seem to be the king of quality content anymore, so I don't think I'd be that upset to lose this service. But for now, I'll stay subscribed and see if Squid Game 2 is gonna flop as bad as I think it will. All right, I'm gonna finish up this list with a streaming service that I think will probably surprise a lot of you. And that service is Apple TV Plus. If this were a couple years ago, I would probably have this one up in the don't even bother list, but things have changed significantly in the past couple of years. I remember one of the first series being The Morning Show, and I couldn't even get past the first couple of episodes. But the series hitting the platform lately have been amazing, and I just can't believe how much I'm loving this service. With Ted Lasso, Foundation, C, and Servant, I'm continuously surprised by how good the offerings are here, and we get it all for only $5 a month. Apple also puts out original movies, none of which I've been shocked by, but they've been enjoyable nonetheless. Because of the low price, the progress they've made over the past couple years, and what they have slated to come, I think Apple TV Plus is a must-have streaming platform in 2022. 
Okay, using the information in this video, how would you go about building a package of services for around $30? For me, the no-brainers are Apple TV Plus and HBO Max, which eats up $20 of our budget. To round it out, I think you'll need to answer a couple of questions for yourself, like, do you have children? If so, Disney Plus is an easy choice for our final slot. If you don't have children, maybe you ask yourself, if you have cable, did you just cut the cable cord recently? And if the answer is yes to that, you may opt for Hulu. Netflix would be an option, but that would take us slightly over budget unless you went with the non-HD plan at $7 a month, but I mean, who's gonna do that? Alternatively, you could fill your final slot with one of the on-again, off-again options we covered earlier. Which services are you currently subscribed to, and do you stick to a budget, or do you just subscribe to everything? Let me know down in the comments. If this video was helpful, pop that like button, be sure to subscribe for more, we'll see you all next time.